Welcome to the fourth video on block diagrams. This particular video is going to introduce a concept of summing junctions. Now, we need to assume, as ever, that students are familiar with some basics. So we're going to assume you now are comfortable with Laplace transforms and transfer functions, how to form block diagrams for systems in series and parallel. We're also going to assume you understand the terminology of a takeoff point. OK, so next this video is, is going to consider how do we represent scenarios that involve the addition or subtraction of signals. And addition or subtraction is done using a summing junction. So here we go, a quick reminder of the terminology that we expect you're familiar with already. So multiplication, if you see a block diagram with an arrow coming in, and then a box and an arrow coming out, then you accept that what this means is the Laplace transform of the output is the product of the Laplace transforms of the input and the transform in the box. So we can use multiplication in our block diagrams. The second one here is what do we mean by a takeoff point? So in essence, if signals are on the same line, so there's no boxes or anything else in between them, then um, it's the same signal at any point on that line. So when we say a takeoff point, it's like creating a parallel line with the same value as on the original line. Here you can see all the lines have x. So what's new? Here we go. A summing junction. So you'll see down here we've given an example of what a summing junction might look like. In particular, you see it's got this circle. Sometimes put a, people put a cross in the middle of the circle, but that depends on the software available. Now, what we've got here is we've got a signal X coming in, a signal Y coming in, and with both these signals you'll see there's a little plus. So what that means is when they go into the summing junction, they add to whatever's there. So here we have two signals coming in, X and Y, and so therefore the output signal Z is X plus Y. And again, we remind the viewer that this is just notation. There's nothing to understand. If you want to add two signals together in a block diagram, this is the notation that you use. A little circle and put pluses to indicate that you're adding. Now, what would happen if, for example, you wanted to subtract two signals? Well, here we go. We could have X coming in here, and that might have a plus on it. And we could have Y coming in here, and that could have a minus on it. So what that would mean is the output signal is x minus y. So a summing junction can do addition or subtraction, simply assign the correct signs, the plus and minus, as appropriate. Now, a quick reminder for you, we've got three rules on this page, multiplication, takeoff points, and summing junctions. If you understand these three rules, you should be able to deal with pretty much any block diagram you're likely to come against, certainly in introductory modules on control. So let's do an example of how we might use these three rules to find some um, expressions. Now what I'm going to do first is put some um, numerical names into this diagram so we know what we're dealing with. Let's the input to H be U. The output from H, uh, let's call it X. The output from Y, let's call it M. Let the input to G be R. The output from G could be W and then the output from this summing box is Z. So you'll notice the first thing I've done is make sure that my block diagram is fully labelled so there's nothing that I'm unsure about. Next, let's work out what relationships we get. Well, we've got X equals H times U. Then we've got Y equals M x and what people tend to do at this point is they say well let's eliminate the x straight away so if I put some brackets around those two what that gives me is y equals m h u so I've got rid of the x and now I've just got y as a function of u now the parallel path I can do in a similar way I've got w equals g r and now the final point is to look at this summing junction. And the summing junction gives me Z equals Y minus W. Or if I put this finally at the bottom, combine all the expressions to get together, it means I get Z equals M 
H U minus G R. Don't worry about the fact that that expression doesn't seem to be particularly simple. You can't make it any simpler. There are two inputs to this loop, U and R, and therefore Z has to be defined in terms of both inputs. Right, now we've got a different example which looks a little bit messier. Again, what I'm going to do is first label the graph to make sure all the different signals are clearly defined. So let's the input be R, and I'm going to mark down here because we've got a parallel path that's also R going into G. So R going into H, R going into G. Outside of H, we can put the output as U. Out of M, let's put the output of Y. Out of G, um, we can have an output of W. Now, there's another signal coming in here. Um, you can call that whatever you want. I'm going to call it F. So we've got a signal F coming in. And then we could have, for example, signal D coming out of that summing junction. And we're nearly there now. Um, the second summing junction, I'll put a signal E. And then finally, coming out of P, we need uh, one more variable name. And I don't want to confuse, I think we can use Z, we've not used Z left. Right. So yes, there's a lot of variables there, but it helps a lot if you've clearly marked every variable on the block diagram, because then you won't make silly mistakes, and you can easily track back any algebra. Now what I need to do is go through and look at each block in turn, each takeoff point in turn, and make sure I write down any relevant expressions. So I'll start with the top path. So I've got U equals H R and then Y equals M U and exactly as before these two terms come together to give me Y equals M H R okay so that's the top path then in the next path I've got W equals G R and I've got D equals W plus F which means D equals G R plus F. So if I just mark the two expressions which are most important so far, I've calculated Y and I've calculated D and I've eliminated, where possible, internal variables. Here, the only internal variable I could eliminate was U. Right, what comes next? I need to calculate E. So E is going to be given as Y minus D. So therefore, if I substitute in what I've got, I get E equals, now Y was M H R. And so then I'm going to get minus G R minus F. And so you see now I've eliminated Y and D. And my expression is solely in terms of the loop inputs, which are R and F. And the final step is to write Z. So Z equals P into M H R minus G R minus F. Or I can put that together, if I just about fit it in here, slightly more compactly, I'm going to get P M H minus P into R minus P into F. And you notice, hopefully, that my output Z is written in terms of input 1R and input 2F. What next then? Well, really, summing junctions are used most often in the context of feedback. So the next few slides are going to look at feedback and how we use the relationships, multiplication, takeoff points in summing junctions to look at the behavior of a feedback loop. We will only do simple loops, but it's noted that if you can do these simple loops using these rules, you should be able to extend them and do far more complex loops where required. So a first, a simple example, a feedback loop with just one block in it. So you can see we've got a single summing junction and a single block, and we've got one takeoff point. So what we need to do is go around and just write down the relevant expressions. So for example, I've got E equals R minus y. Now if you're wondering why that is, you can see there's a takeoff point down near y, and so y follows all the way around this feedback path. So if I put that down, 
in case it's not clear. This is a feedback path because it's taking the output and feeding it back to the input. So there we go, we get E equals R minus Y. The next point, E goes through this block M, so I use my multiplication and I get Y equals M times E. And now what you'll notice, I hope, is that both these expressions contain an E and this is an internal variable that I'm not particularly interested in, so I can eliminate it by writing y equals m times r minus y. And now you'll notice I've got a y on both sides of the equation. So what I can do is bring the y's to the same side of the equation by writing 1 plus m into y equals m into r. And then finally, I can put this in standard transfer function form by putting y on its own. So I get y equals m over 1 plus m <coughs> into r. <coughs> so now I've got a relationship between the output for my feedback loop, that's y, and the input to my feedback loop, which is r. Often r is called a target or a set point. Now what we'll do on the next slide is try and give you a more systematic way of doing loops in general so you don't get lost. So what we've done is we've said first write the expression for the forward path and the expression for the forward path in case you lost it was y equals m e. Now if there are internal variables you might eliminate them but in this case there aren't. Write an expression for the feedback path. Now in this case the feedback path it's just y. There's nothing else to write. Write an expression linked to the summing junction. Well, this for the previous loop was e equals r minus y. And then it suggests that you eliminate e. Now, clearly, you can do that if I mark it here by taking this expression here and putting it in here. And therefore, e will be eliminated. And then finally, rearrange into a form linking the target to the output, which basically means write it as y equals something times r, which is just algebra. So what you've got here is a, is a relatively systematic way of tackling loops, and we will show you with a couple of examples how you can do this. So here we go. We've got a slightly more complex uh, feedback loop. It's got two blocks in it, and we've written down our guidance for how you might tackle it. So step one, it says write an expression for the forward path and eliminate internal variables if necessary. So I've got u equals m e, and I've got y equals g u, which gives me y equals g m e. E. And the key point here, if you've not noticed, is that I've eliminated the internal variable u. So I've now just got y in terms of e. Right, next, write an expression for the feedback path. Well, in this particular case, you can see y comes around this feedback path, so I can just write down that the feedback path comes down as y. Write an expression linked to the summing junction. Well, here I've got E equals R minus Y. And next it says eliminate E, which what it's saying is take this E here and put it in here. And so what you're going to end up with is Y equals G M into R minus Y. And finally, it says do some algebra so you can separate out the y's and the r's and get it in a simple form. So if I do that in two steps, you'll see I've got 1 plus gm into y equals gm into r. And so finally, y equals gm over 1 plus gm into r. And there's your answer. final example and you'll see this one is just a little bit more complex again now I've added a block into the feedback path but I've already put some of the variable names on the loop for you to make life a bit easier so we'll do this one slightly more quickly because by now you'll pretty much know what you're doing so first I'll do the forward path so I've got u 
equals m e y equals g u and taking those two together I get y equals g m e so you'll see that's the same as the previous example write an expression for the feedback path now in this case you'll see we have got a bit more work to do we've got y coming into h and w coming out of h so the feedback path I get w equals h y write an expression linked to the summing junction so this is e equals r minus w but what I can do now is I can say ah I've got a w from the uh, line above so I can now write this as r minus h y so I've now got rid of that internal variable w which wasn't particularly useful next eliminate e and that's the same as uh, we've done on the previous slides it says take this e and put it in here and so what you're going to get is y equals g m into r minus h y and now you'll see we're nearly there we just rearrange it as before by bringing common variables onto the same side so what I've got is 1 plus g m h into y equals g m into r or finally y equals g m over 1 plus g m h into r.